So, so far I've got my pictures laid out. Now let's press the play button and watch this nice 3D image. Yep, absolutely nothing's happening. Why is nothing happening? Well, so far all I've done is brought these images in and dumped them on top of each other. I haven't made them into 3D yet. So that's the next step. I've got to make it into 3D. How do I do that? Well, firstly, I've got to turn on animation or effect mode so I can move things around in 3D, which you do with this button. Click on that, and now I'm in effects mode. You'll notice as soon as I did that, another display popped up here, and some other stuff popped up here. Turn it off, turn it back on again, and I've got two displays. Those two look exactly the same. Let's grab hold of this little doobie in the corner and drag a bit, and you notice it gets a bit bigger. But yeah, those two are exactly the same. This picture up here is always showing me what they call the camera view. The camera view being you know, what it's actually going to look like in the editing program. This picture down here we can change. So at the moment it's showing me exactly the same thing. But if I come up to here where it says perspective view and click on the little triangle, you can see I've got a whole bunch of different views. So I've got the camera view, the perspective view, front, back, top and so on. Now you notice as I'm changing these views around, going for the top view or the bottom view or whatever, it's moving the image here because this is now turning it into a 3D studio. If you're used to a 3D program, this will make perfect sense. If you're not used to it, you'll probably need to listen to this explanation. But it's basically turned this whole thing into a 3D studio. And having chosen the top view here, I'm looking down on all these images from the top. So that's the camera pointing at it. That's me now looking down on everything. And they're all along this white line. They're all placed in the same place. I've got to stagger them out a bit. So I'm going to select the front twig and I'm going to move it. And I'm moving that closer to the camera. I'm going to go to the front parrot. You notice on the front twig now, the white line, the thing I've selected is there. If I go to the front parrot, that's back here. So I'm going to take the front parrot. I'm going to move that forward a bit. Click on the back parrot, grab hold of that, and move that forward a bit. Now you might notice as I'm moving these things around, it's moving here. Although if they go backwards and forwards, it doesn't do an awful lot. If I move them left and right, it does. But if I move them you know, backwards and forwards on what they call the z-axis, it still looks pretty much the same. But now what I've done is to stagger them in 3D. If I change the view up here, so let's go to, say, the perspective view. You can see it looks the same. But if I come down to this widget that we have here that looks like a, a bit like a diamond, I sort of grab hold of it and you'll notice that they have moved around a bit. They've all been staggered around a bit. Clicking on this sort of diamond widget is just changing between the different views. It's kind of the equivalent of coming up here and selecting the left view is the same as clicking on the word left. Click on that, it goes halfway between the left and the front. Click on that, you get to the front, which is the same as selecting front from up here. Or I've got these little widgets here, which let me move around in 3D space as well. So this one in the middle, for example, lets me rotate around it. And you can see there, you can almost see the kind of 3D move we're attempting to achieve just by doing it with that, what they call the orbit widget in the middle. This one moves it left and right and up and down. This one moves it forwards and backwards. But all these are doing are helping me to move around in the 3D world that I'm creating. They're not actually changing the animation. Still nothing's changed in the camera view, and that's what's going to pop up in my editing program. They're just helping me visualize how I've staggered these things in 3D. To actually get my 3D camera moving, I've got to do something else. But yeah, the first step is to drag these things out in 3D. And I could have moved them a bit further. Let's pop back to the top view again. And I'm going to move down a bit. So I'm going to select the front twig, move that even closer to the camera. Move the parrot a bit closer and the back parrot. So I've staggered them out a bit more so that when it comes to my rotating in 3D, they'll be a bit more staggered and I'll get a bit more of a 3D move on it. Now, how far you move them is the sort of thing you just fiddle with until you get something that you like the look of. Anyway, so far I've staggered them in 3D. Now I've got to put my 3D camera move on it. And to do that, what you've got to do is you've got to come back to the timeline here. And down here on the timeline, you can see I've got all these different images. 
At this section underneath here, you can see I've got various other things. And the thing I'm heading for is 3D camera. And the 3D camera is the thing that I need to move. I don't need to animate any of this lot. I didn't need to animate the positions of the twig or anything. I actually need to animate the camera. So the camera moves around this. So select the 3D camera, pop over to the properties here and click on the effect icon and you can see suddenly, oh, 3D camera's up there. It's not on, let's turn it on. There we are, I now have a 3D camera. I'm gonna play it, still nothing's happening. Looking at all this lot, what I want to do is add a bit of rotation. I've got X, Y, and Z. Grabbing hold of the slider there, you'll notice it's moving at huge and huge amounts. It's a lot easier to come over here, put your mouse over the numbers and just drag it left and right. And you can do much more subtle movements just by dragging the numbers left and right like this. Now you'll notice as I'm fiddling with the X there, it's making it rotate around the center. Now that's not what I want. So I'm gonna come over here to where it says 280, click on it once, type in naught just to reset it back to the start. Now actually the one I want to fiddle with here is this one, the Y direction. So I'm gonna kind of stick my mouse on there and then just move it left and right. And you notice I'm getting the kind of 3D move that I was after. And all I want to do is I want to start off about here and rotate to about there. So what I'm going to do is stick the cursor right at the start of the timeline, put that back to zeros, and I'm going to click on the little stopwatch button to put in a keyframe. Then I'm going to drag around on the numbers so I get it to start at the angle I want to. Then I'm going to click on this little triangle here, which moves it straight to the end of the timeline, and then make another move to where I want it to finish. So I've actually put in two keyframes there, one at the start and one at the end. Now press the play button, and you can see, yeah, I've got a nice little 3D camera move in there. Now I've got a slight problem because you can see as I move around this shot, some of these images don't quite go to the edge and the background's not quite big enough. So to help solve that, I'm just going to move the camera in a bit. So I'm click, click on the, the Z part of the translate up here and move the camera a bit closer to the image. It's still not quite right, so let's select the front twig first. And what I'm going to do is just make the whole thing just a little bit bigger. I mean, I've actually moved the whole layer closer to the camera, but I haven't actually made the twig any bigger. And if it's moved closer to the camera, then it should be bigger. So I'm just going to grab the scale here and move those around and make the twig just a little bit bigger. And move it across a bit, so I make sure that I don't end up seeing the end of it. Now I've got to do the same thing on the front parrot, so let's go to him and just make him a little bit bigger here. I'm going to move him down a bit. Let's just sort of grab hold of him here and just move him across and down a bit. So I've got him sorted out. Now I need to do the same with the uh, back parrot. And then make sure I don't see any edges as I move around. And I've got a slight problem there in the background in that I've got a little black bar there. So, and yeah, make that slightly bigger as well. If I play that... I've just added a nice little 3D move to it. Now I've been merrily clicking on things and playing on numbers here, but I haven't keyframed anything. I haven't clicked the stopwatch on anything. Any time I change it, it just changes it all the way through. Like this parrot here, I change the size of it. He's bigger all the way through. The only thing that I've keyframed is the 3D camera move. And looking at that camera move, it is possible that I've just gone a little bit too far. I mean, I am dealing here with a flat image. And just, if you go to the end there, if you turn it around too much, you'll start to notice that it's basically a series of flat things. You know, that beak isn't getting any more 3D just because I've moved it around a bit and cut it out. It's still a flat image. So don't do too much of a camera move on it, otherwise you'll spoil the effect. So maybe what I really ought to do is not do so much of a 3D camera move. So I'm gonna select the camera, come up to here, Click on this little button to make sure I get to the final keyframe and then make the angle at the end there slightly less. And that's it. Yeah, now I've got a nice 3D move. Exit, save as animation, and now I've got a 3D move.